بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد حبت في الله continue on in our discussion and study of a short portion of Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim's uh, discussion of the meaning of tawakkul the reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we reach a portion of the treaties where Ibn al-Qayyim was mentioning a statement of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah where he was refuting Ahl al-Bida and Zandaka for their rejection of the Qadr and their rejection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes and knowledge and showing that by rejecting these attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this ilm of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they don't really know Allah and they don't really have tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even if they claim otherwise. Shaykh uh, al-Islam uh, Ibn al-Qayyim said he said so the more a person knows and is better aware of Allah and his attributes then his tawakkul will be sounder and stronger and the law, the one free of all imperfections and the most high, knows best. So this lets us know that ilm, ilm al nafia this is the way. If you want to increase your worship, you want to increase your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it's through sound knowledge and practicing that knowledge. I'm not saying just memorizing. Some people, they memorize and they have hardly anything from religion. They memorize the Quran. They memorize many things from the Sunnah. But they're extremist or they they are extreme in their worship by worshiping other than Allah, committing shirk. Don't think that all the people who commit bid'ah and so forth are jahil. Many of them, they have a lot of knowledge in many uloom and sharia. They have many, uh, a lot of knowledge in Islamic sciences. There are people who are muhaddith, who are people of ahl hadith and people who have all sorts of uh, the Arabic language and tafsir but they negate the attributes of Allah. Or they worship other than Allah. So that shows their knowledge is not benefiting them because of bid'ah. So, ahabat fillah, true knowledge is sound Islamic knowledge based on kitab Allah wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa and the understanding of the salaf and practicing that knowledge. And may Allah bless us with tawfiq. Ameen. The second level of tawakkul that Ibn, uh, Ibn al-Qayyim mentioned he said to affirm the means, the asbab and causes. Meaning, as we mentioned, we said a tawakkul ala Allah is al itimad ala Allah wa fi'l asbab. That it is uh, strictly giving all of your fears and trust to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, leaving your fears and your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then doing righteous actions to fulfill that. That's t that's true tawakkul. That's tawakkul sunniya. Ibn al-Khayyim said, since whoever denies these, then his tawakkul is defective. This is the opposite of what seems to be the case to the people of shallow thinking. Those who think that affirming the means is detrimental to tawakkul and that denying them is perfect tawakkul. So know that t that the tawakkul of those who deny the means, the asbab, meaning those people who don't make actions, they say, I'm relying on Allah, I'm just going to pray in the masjid and I'm going to be able to make hijrah. I'm going to be able to make hajj this year and I'm just going to pr pray and I'm not going to work. So these are the people who he's talking about. He said, no, so know that the tawakkul of those who deny the means, the asbab, will never be sound and correct. Since tawakkul itself is from the strongest means, asbab, for attainment of the matter concerning which one is doing. One is doing tawakkul. So it is like supplication, a dua, which Allah has made a means for attainment of that which he supplicates for. So if the servant were to believe that Allah has not made his tawakkul a means, and has not made his supplication, dua, a means of attaining something, then this would mean that the matter of con a matter concerning which he is having tawakkul, and that which he is supplicating for, if it were something already decreed, then he would attain it whether he had tawakkul or not, whether he supplicated or not. And if he were something, and if it were something not decreed, then he would not attain, attain it whether he had tawakkul or not. Therefore, these people clearly stated that tawakkul and supplication are purely and simply acts of servitude worship and that they serve no purpose other than that. Furthermore, 
that if the servant abandoned tawakkul and supplication, he would not miss out on anything uh, decreed for him. Then some of the more extreme of them declare that making supplication that one should not be taken to account for mistakes and forgetfulness is of no benefit since it is uh, something guaranteed to occur. So here uh, Ibn al-Qayyim is talking about Ibn al-Qayyim is talking about those people who are extreme in the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They say that everything is by the qadr of Allah. Naam, everything is by the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they make no actions. They say, hey, I'm not held accountable because if I drank alcohol or I committed adultery or I uh, smoked weed or I did such and such sin, I'm not held accountable because it's all from the decree of Allah. This is what these people say. And this is uh, 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 a type of ignorance. And this is not tawakkul ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibn al-Qayyim said, Then I have seen one of those who go to the furthest extreme amongst them say in a book of his that it is not permissible to make such a supplication. Rather, it is allowed to recite that ayah, but not read it as a supplication. He said, Because supplicating with that necessitates doubt that it will come about. This is because one who supplicates is in a state between fear and hope, and that to doubt that this will come about is to doubt that which Allah has informed of. So this shows you how people go astray with regards to Tawakkul and with regards to Aqidah in general with creed and that's why we have to have beneficial knowledge and we'll stop there and we'll, and we'll continue in the next sitting with sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam